I've been lucky enough to borrow this 1980s Japanese six track recorder, so thought it would be the perfect opportunity to show you what it's like and make some music on it. This video will be split into two main sections. The first half will be a mini review of the WSX1, and in the second half, I'll record a song on this unit. Going by the music magazine reviews of the time, the WSX1 was launched towards the end of 1989 and had a street price of around £1,250 in the UK, which would have made it around $2,000 in the US. It's quite a radical product for the time too, as all other cassette based multi track recorders were either 4 or 8 track machines. I've used quite a lot of different brands and models of Port Studios and I must say the first impressions of the build quality is good with this machine. It seems to be solidly built and has stood the test of time rather well considering it is almost 35 years old. Let's start off by looking at the left hand side of the unit which is where most of the tracking facilities are. The lower half is taken up with the 8 channel mixer. All channels have the same set of functions and the only difference being the absence of tape return switches on channels 7 and 8. On channels 1 to 6, separate switches are provided for tape on off and mic line on off. There's a fixed two band shelving EQ which is a bit basic. I personally prefer an adjustable frequency EQ like you get on a Tascam 244, but these do what they've been set out to do just fine. We've also got two auxiliary sends, one goes to the inbuilt effects and the other can be used for external units. One feature I really like is the inclusion of a solo button, which makes life easier when working on separate parts of a mix. The LCD screen is also a great feature and you can swap it between displaying the individual tape tracks or stereo bus settings. Alright, on to the right hand side of the unit. We have the two sets of transport controls for deck A and B and LED screen to display the tape position. Above the transport controls is the track selection controls to assign where you're recording to and the Q-mix controls to control monitoring. At the top, we've got the double size cassette lid, which you open manually. Deck A is calibrated for type two tapes only and runs at double speed and uses Dolby C noise reduction. Deck B is the stereo mix down machine running at conventional speed. It employs either chrome or normal ferric tapes and has a choice of Dolby C or B or no noise reduction at all. The main channel inputs and headphones are handy placed on the front of the unit and everything else is around the back. This includes XLR inputs for channels 7 and 8, but sadly no phantom power. We also have six tape outs on phono sockets, which gives you access to a direct feed from the multi-track for utilizing a more sophisticated mixer drawer mix down. Alternatively, they can be used as individual sends to outboard effects, and there are plenty of options in the returns department. Three stereo pairs of phono connectors marked auxiliary can feed either input 7 and 8 or access the mix bus directly. Let's put this unit to the test and do some recording then. My band We Happy Few are going to play an acoustic version of a song we're planning to put on our next album called I Like To Dance. The great thing about the WSX1 is that it allows you to record all six tracks simultaneously, which means we can all play at once. I'll use an AKG on the suitcase drum and a SM57 on the snare, which I'll sum together onto one tape track to save space. We're using a Rode M2 mic on the vocals, which is running through an external Focusrite preamp to supply phantom power and a bit of compression. The bass is just going straight into the Sansui and the lead acoustic has a Shure Beta 57 in front of it. There's no footage of the Sansui in action whilst recording as I was filming the band, but I'll overdub the electric guitar and keyboard parts then play it all back for you to hear. I've done a quick mix off camera so things are just about where they should be. Just to let you know that deck B isn't working in this machine, which is a common fault unfortunately. So I'm doing the mix down to my computer, so that's what you're going to be hearing. Let's play a section. I'm going to stop it there for a moment to solo a couple of the tracks so you can see how they sound in isolation. Let's start off by soloing the drums and playing a bit of those back.
Now the drums are summed into mono, so it's all on the one track. Let's also add in the bass. So there's the rhythm section. Now the acoustic guitar is on track three. Then singing on four. Five electric guitar. And six is the keyboards. Right, the next thing I'd like to do is to show you the, the reverb function. I've currently got it on number two, which is a longish reverb. It's a, a digital reverb, which is quite an interesting feature for a machine like this. It's not the sort of thing you usually get in a cassette port studio. The other thing you have to bear in mind is that if you press solo, you don't get the effects coming through. So um, what I'm going to do is just pull the faders down and just keep the acoustic guitar up. Currently got the reverb about halfway up, so let's hear that. I'm going to increase the level so you can hear it more clearly. Now it's not particularly pleasant when it's that level, to me at least. I think on the mid setting it does a reasonable job though. I'm going to bring back in the vocals with the guitar now so you can hear them both with the reverb and let's have them on about 12 o'clock. Uh, what I'll also do is swap over and play the first reverb so you can see the, the short one and how that compares. When I'm having fun. Let's make it louder. I like to dance when I'm with no one. Yes, I like to dance. Do you like to dance? So that was the small room reverb. So let's swap over to the third and final one and see what that sounds like. Well, I can hear you. Well, that sounds all right, but I'm going to move it back to the second reverb, which is the one I prefer for this particular mix. Okay, let's rewind back to the beginning and I'll play back through a section of the verse and chorus without talking so you can really hear how the machine sounds. And I'll include a bit of footage of the band playing and myself doing the mixing on the Sansui. So I'm going to reset the levels as they were at the start, which is roughly something like that from memory, and return to zero. Another nice function that. So what do you all think about the WSX-1 then? I personally think it strikes a good balance between track count and fidelity. At the time, this would have been as close to a studio in a box as possible with built-in effects and a mix-down deck. The machine has great build quality, but the common issue seems to be the 40 deck Bs and the usual issue of needing new belts. The main thing to bear in mind if you find with these units is that the parts will be harder to get hold of than the more popular brands such as Tascam and Fostex, so do bear that in mind if you're going to buy one. I've really enjoyed using this machine though and the highlights for me are the build quality, the sound and having six tracks of simultaneous recording. Also love the clear monitoring displays and the direct outputs. I'd also love to hear your thoughts about this quirky deck and if anyone else has used one before. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time.